Hi, this is Stacy from The Advisor, and today I'm so excited because we have an amazing guest today. Today we have Jenny Manon, and she is a wonderful, wonderful person, and she is an expert with helping people with self-love and using teaching people how to learn how to love themselves and also how to incorporate the seven chakras into your life and how having self-love in your life and using the seven chakras and how to utilize them to the maximum can actually change your life and make your life so much more productive and actually bring a whole new view to your life. So Jenny, why don't you tell people about yourself and tell them what you do? And I'm just so excited. This is going to be great. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you so much for having me, Stacey. Oh, you're very welcome. Yeah, well, my journey started about 17 years ago. I'd been sick for seven years and doctors said I'd be in a wheelchair and couldn't heal. And I wound up healing myself in three weeks of all chronic illnesses. And that kind of woke me up to the power of the mind and yeah. yeah, how strong we are all are and how unlimited. So I dove right into studying that and it's been 17 years of study and learned a bunch of different energy healing uh, modalities. I've learned the Akashic Record, shamanism, and created a bunch of tools along the way. I love guided meditations. I love yes. chakras, as you mentioned, love energy. Yes. Uh, this book was published. There's a whole unit in there on chakras. I absolutely love the power of, well, it's Eastern medicine, things that are included there, but we don't really include. Yeah. And so yeah, just love, love showing people that life can be easier. Right. Because we do get in our own way a lot and get stuck in our limited stories. So really, that's my passion to really show people life can be joyful. And yes. fun. exactly, it exactly. That way. So and little tools. I love like really little, easy, simple tools because it'd be great if we all had hours a day to meditate on a mountain. But yeah, it's not <laughs> <realistic. So laughs> little short tools we could use through the day to really keep ourselves empowered, keep ourselves right. feeling, feeling good instead of going to the negativity that seems to want to draw us in. Yes, definitely. Now for people about self love is so big right now. It's a topic that so many people are interested in. Can you explain what self love is and why it's so important for each person to exemplify self-love into their life and incorporate it into their daily lives? Yeah, I think there are a few aspects of self-love. There is the, you know, the body, mind, and soul. How are you treating mm -hmm. the body, mind, and soul? Yes. How are you treating your body? We all, we all know that one pretty well. If we're not eating well or exercising or getting yes. enough sun or getting enough sleep, but the mind, you know, are you learning new things? Are you open? Are you, you know, working on, you and I were talking before about learning. It's always like, want to learn more stuff, you know, yeah. really engaging yourself. And the spirit is one of the most important ones too, because we need to connect with ourselves to yes. know what, how are you even feeling? So many times we're on that automatic pilot going through the day. And what happens is, if we've had trauma, which, you know, I think everyone has, you know, we yeah. can be living from those limited stories that maybe our parents or our community or a past relationship told us that we don't even realize we're reacting from it, yes. but we are. Exactly. So really about locating those hurt part of ourselves and really forgiving others, forgiving ourselves doesn't yeah. mean everything was okay, you know, but really giving ourselves that love and it can be little, little things. I know there's so many busy moms that, you know, self-love comes last because, Oh, I have a kid that they, they have, I have to give them everything. Right. But really there is, there is a reason the flight attendants say, put on your mask first. We do yes. have to take care of ourselves and whether it's, you know, in the shower saying positive affirmations or giving thanks for our body, you know, yes. It is like incorporating things into our daily life to show we love ourselves because we know if we treated a animal, a pet or a child, the way we talk to ourselves, usually they would not be very healthy, you know? Yeah. So it really is tapping into the self-talk, paying attention, not beating ourselves up. If we hear the negativity, I know when I was healing myself, I was listening to myself and I was appalled. Yeah. Like telling myself you're not a good enough mom because you can't do this you're not gotten a good enough so we always have that constant critic going but yeah. when we start to put as much love into that give ourselves a pat on the back 
what mom gives themselves credit for like making dinner or make packing a lunch for their kid. Like exactly so much things, so many things during the day, but not really recognizing, wow, you did a good job. Hey, you got up and showered today. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. And I find, you know, I think you made an excellent comment that a lot of people, you know, a lot of people when they have issues, it goes back to the root cause and it's the, it's the their childhood or the trauma they went through. And, you know, when you go through those things in life, how would you suggest to help somebody let go? Because if we carry that on a backpack with us, it's going to wear us down and eventually it could just destroy us and we're going to fall. So how, you know, when people have gone through a traumatic childhood or they've gone through a traumatic event in their life and it's affecting them, maybe they're repressing the emotions, you know, or maybe it's affecting them by, because they're constantly bursting out in anger, you know, how does a person use self-love or any of the other techniques that, you know, that you use to help yourself? How would you suggest someone lets go of the past and be able to focus on the present, the now, so they can move on to the future in a more productive manner? There are so many techniques for that. And it really does. I love that we're going to be talking about the chakras because it depends where is that energy stuck? You mentioned yeah. a lot of different places, you know, it could be stuck in the heart, you know, and mm -hmm. causing issues with the lungs or actually, you know, heart issues. It could be stuck in the solar plexus, you know, and, and you could be like exerting power, you know, because you feel like you have no power, but really this is the, the gentleness with oneself. Yeah. We have to recognize that hurt people hurt people. If we were abused, if we were treated badly, that person was hurting. Happy, well-adjusted yes. people don't go around hurting people. Yes. So when we come from a place of forgiveness, it's not like, gee, I'm glad this happened to me or, oh, that person's absolved of everything. It really is. I'm letting go of this. Yes. Because if I don't, it's going to keep me here. It's yes. going to keep me tethered to the past. And yes. I've probably given it more than enough energy for this lifetime. Yes. I have to give myself permission to move on. And there are a lot of tools for forgiveness. You know, there's writing letters, you know, and burning them to the yes. people who did abuse you. There's, I love the tool Ho'oponopono, you know, the prayer, you know, I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. Simple prayer to really re release anything that we're holding on to. Yes. But it's really giving yourself permission and loving yourself enough to be like, enough. Mm -hmm. You know, I've, I've gone on about this. I'm not solving it. All I'm doing is repeating it, holding myself back. Obviously, if it's a deep trauma, there might be other work that needs to be done, deeper yes. energetic work, deeper, whatever work resonates with you to heal it. But a lot of times we can start moving forward now yes. with very easy tools and a lot of compassion for ourselves. Yes. I think that's a very good point. And, you know, when you mentioned about letting go and forgiveness, you know, from my own experience in life, you know, I was, I was so upset and angered by, by certain people in my life that caused me a lot of traumatic emotions and it was destroying me inside. But once you don't have to, when you forgive someone, you don't have to go to them and let them know you have to realize and, and say to yourself, okay, you know, it's the past, you know, that person, you know, did some harmful things to me, but I forgive them. Maybe they weren't in their right mind because usually when people do things, you know, it's because they're not like you mentioned in their right mind. And you have to say, I forgive you for what you did. And you let go, whether you imagine a dove on your shoulder and let it take all their negative things that, that caused you, let it and let that just feel that just, you know, you imagine it just sucking out the negativity and flying away and, you know, say, I forgive you. I forgive you. I love you. This is, you know, what caused you to do that. And it's the past. I can't change the past and just move on. And I feel like once I forgave those people, and caused me, you know, traumatic things to happen in my life. I felt so much better. It was like a brick was off my shoulder. It was like a building was released and I was actually able to move forward. You know, you don't have to hear that person come to you and say, I, I'm sorry, you could forgive them and not l hold on to it. Once you let go, I feel, I feel like it, it takes away so much pain 
and so much anger. And so, you know, all those negative emotions kind of go with it, you know, because I feel like when you, if you don't forgive somebody that, that unforgiveness could destroy you inside. How do you yeah. feel? Well, we were talking about the energy flows through the chakras. So if we're yes. holding on to something, it's like the clenched fist. Like there's yes. no way energy can flow through that point. Yeah. So it can cause illness. It can cause, you know, either physical, emotional distress because that energy isn't flowing. The yeah. Way it's supposed to be flowing. And we're really the only ones that can heal that for ourselves. Like a hundred percent going deep and loving that part of ourselves that's hurt instead of criticizing it or that coulda woulda shoulda or you know whatever we get into in our heads that yeah. does not move us forward it doesn't it doesn't bring us to the present moment like you mentioned where all the power is that's where all our power is in the present moment yes now for people who you know know what the chakras are but they're not really you know well educated in that field can you explain to people what chakra means and what it is and maybe go over each chakra and give them a description, maybe a brief description or however you want it detailed you want to get into to make them understand what, you know, the chakras are and what each chakra represents and then how powerful it could be in your life if you utilize it. Sure. Well, chakras are wheels of energy and light that we actually have hundreds of them in yeah. our body and around our body, but usually we're talking about the seven major chakras. Mm -hmm. And for today, that's what we're, we're talking about. The yeah, because it's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> so the first one is at the base of the spine. And I love that they are color coded like the rainbow. So you can yes. remember them like that. Roy G. Biv all the way up. <laughs> yeah, I love yours. I have one to the side of me too. So red is at the base of the spine. And this is a big one. This is really the messages that we come in with at birth. Like we we're talking about, maybe you didn't have the best parents in the world. Maybe your community wasn't supportive. Maybe you got some really negative, uh, you were born into a negative environment. Mm -hmm. So the first chakra really is, it's our root chakra. And it is about how we're rooted on this planet. Do we feel safe walking on this planet? Yeah. Do you know, and if not, we can get leg problems. We can get issues with our feet. If we are not feeling that safety, it is kind of the root of abundance too. you know, feeling that security from, from the earth. The second one, this is the sacral, which mm -hmm. is like right below your belly button. And that is, uh, orange. <laughs> We're going to go off the colors and <laughs> That is really our sexuality, how we see ourselves as men and women, how we create emotions. And you can see kind of how one feeds into the other, because if we did not have positive messages, we yeah. are going to not be creating healthy emotions at the second chakra level. Yes. And it can affect fertility. It can mm -hmm. affect anything with our sexual organs. And I find as a woman, this is what I'm constantly working on. You know? Yes. But it we is, all are. <laughs> yeah. It's also about abundance, you know. Um, and again, the seat of self worth really works its way up through each one. I mean, you could see how self love and self worth would work its way if we didn't have, you know, parents that gave us that support or a community, or even there was one negative relative or one member of our family, a sibling or something that was negative. I mean, that can really inform that first chakra. You're not good enough. You know, you're not worthy. And then you go into the second chakra. And if we've had unhealthy relationships, you know, intimate relationships that can start to eat away at that one. Yes. Mm -hmm. you know, really knowing that we can control the messages there. And it's so powerful tapping into them. The next is a solar plexus, you know, at our solar plexus, which is yellow and which is our seat of our personal power. So, you know, if it's overactive, we might try to control a lot. If it's underactive, we might feel like we have no control. Right. And it can cause digestive issues. It's almost like we cannot digest yes. what's on to us or the energy around us. So all of these, you could just kind of see how they relate and they kind of make sense. I yeah. love how they all make sense when you learn them too. They don't have to be yeah. complicated. The fourth one is, so the lower three are really about earth. The, the upper three are really about our more intuitive side and the heart really joins them together. Yeah. And the heart is green or gold and it's about self-love. It's about relationships. It's about 
how we see ourselves in relationships. Mm -hmm. This can be very, it can be a challenging one because this is where self-love is. Do you believe you're worthy? Do yes. you set healthy boundaries around relationships? Are you right. repeating the same pattern around relationships? Do you tend to overgive? Are you a people pleaser? There are so many things within that. Yeah. Uh, even as a mom, you know, we can judge ourselves so much as being, you know, as a parent, like yeah. really giving ourselves that self-love is important. It can cause issues. I've seen it cause issues like, like breast cancer, you know, it can cause issues with the heart and the lungs. And it's almost like you can't breathe. It makes sense though, because if you don't feel that love for yourself, mm -hmm. if you don't feel that love with relationships, it can feel very oppressive and like yes. you can't breathe. The throat chakra is blue mm -hmm. and it's about communication and expression, creative expression. So okay. how, and speaking your truth, are you in integrity? Are, are you living a life, an authentic life? Mm -hmm. Are you able to speak your truth? Because this is another one I find out of balance in a lot of women. Maybe they were told they should not speak their truth. They can't speak up. Yes. Uh, this can cause thyroid issues, which a lot of women do, you know, encounter in their lifetimes. It can really, um, but by creative expression, that's the beautiful part is you can really bring this one into balance. I mean, each one has ways that we can bring into balance through crystals, through eating foods of those colors, through yes. yoga poses. I mean, there's so much power through affirmations. Yes. So the throat chakra is a, is a biggie too. And it, it is about also channeling information. So if yes. we are um, really open with those upper chakras, it's yes. easier to gain that information and feel more connected to the world right. at large. Six chakra is probably the most... Um, You'd known, I guess, because it's right here. It's the yeah. third eye. It's indigo. It's about our intuition. I always look at it as it's like binoculars looking out at the world and binoculars yes. in. Like, are we seeing the truth of it? How yes. fine tuned are those binoculars? Are mm -hmm. you seeing a blur? Are you seeing real truth? And I think yes. this is such an important one right now because with AI coming out with things that we are not going to know what the truth is, like, we're yeah. getting intuition more than ever to discern what is true yes is true for us yes so really being able to receive that and know that mm -hmm. and not have you know and you know we we know all know people that think they know the truth and yes they know everything like uh -huh. worry of those people you know? yeah definitely <laughs> trust yourself and you know that can cause headaches if if not aligned it can cause almost like an over exaggerated sense of we've all seen in the spiritual world the gurus you know yes. like they know everything and mm -hmm. an overactive six chakra and the crown is so beautiful it's violet or white yeah. at the top of the head. And that is our connection to everything. Yeah. I love this one with food because there's food that balances all the other ones. But for the seventh, it's, are you being present when you eat? Are you just shoveling food in? Yeah, like, exactly. Oh my God, I got to do the next thing. Like, but are you being present? Are you being grateful for the food that you're eating? Are yes. You connection when you're in nature with the animal, with, you know, the animals or the grass or the trees, are you really allowing for that connection and that divine wisdom? Yes. So, yeah, I mean, we can see how like self-love in each of them. Yeah. Is important. And if they are out of balance, they will cause fluctuations in our energy, which can cause emotional or physical repercussions and it's not like our body is punishing us it's just right. telling us hey we're out of balance here you know exactly in this area of our body and it really does give us an opportunity when we learn about them to be like oh you know I do get frequent headaches maybe I'm not seeing the truth of a situation right. oh my stomach is always in knots what am I not able to digest in my life right now like we can really use it as an inner diagnostic tool yeah you know, and I, there's so many skeptics out there, but the way you just described it, people have to realize that over 90%, close to 100% of our world is run by energy. And if we didn't have energy, we wouldn't survive as human beings. We wouldn't be here. And everything has to be in sync for us to work properly. And if something is blocked in our life, if we have trauma somewhere in the chakras, then it's going to cause blockage 
and it's gonna it's gonna disrupt our whole lives of that you know or part of our lives and it's gonna not cause us to be at our 100 percent maximum self and people have to realize that you know that the chakras are reality it's 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 a thing you know even my, my 80 year old dad was like you know i had i i you know i'm into reiki and i'm into the chakras and and i was going i had made an appointment to go see a reiki and, and he's laughing at me oh you believe in that stuff you know because he's 80 years old he's from the old school you know he's from another country you know and to him if you can't see it he just doesn't believe it you know, and I just let it go. I'm never going to change an 80 year old man's life, you know, <laughs> change his view on life. He has it already set to a T, you know, especially his daughter who's younger than him, you know, they know it all, you know, <laughs> but for the skeptics out there, explain to them why it's real. Like, you know, like if someone comes up to you and says, you really believe in that stuff? Like, you know, how could you believe in something you can't see? You know, like really, you know, well, how would you respond? Stacey, because the Eastern medicine is, is based on it. If you go yes. to acupuncture school, you know, or if you study chiropractor to be a chiropractor, you are learning about energy points in the body. A hundred percent acupuncture. The, yeah. You're learning about the meridians. You are, you know, it's, it's a no brainer in yoga. You yes. know, about the chakras, you know, how energy flows through your body. It's ancient, and I know that this country is a little younger, you yeah. know, than a lot of other countries. But I do feel like it's 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 kicking in slowly, but it surely. is kicking in. It is it definitely is. There are hospitals now that do healing touch and Reiki. And, they do. You know, they are allowing like meditation into some schools now. It is like these things are becoming more known or more thought of as not so woo woo anymore yes if we look at the ancient civilizations like they're based on it shamanism yes the chakras like all of these ancient you know civilizations i don't believe that they were all wrong they all came up with different you know the same thing in different parts of the world yeah you know? like to me that's about as truth you know as much truth as you can ask for it's been told over and over again and it just kind of makes sense. Again, it's not, it doesn't feel woo woo when you start learning about it. Yes. Like, of course, my heart, you know, is related to my relationships and how I yes. feel myself. Of course, my stomach, you know, if digestion is off, I feel like I'm not in control. Like these all do make sense. Yes. Really embracing them like that and being like, okay, well, what is my body? Getting quiet because usually we don't pay attention to the body unless our body is showing us it's it's in pain yeah so like when it's in pain or maybe even before it's in pain asking like what can I do for you thank yeah. you body hey thanks for showing up today exactly what can I do for you you know my stomach okay you know what do you need what is it that I'm not seeing like just slowing down exactly and really listening and being in communication because our body is always speaking to us it's just we're usually two in our head yeah to exactly Exactly. I tell my patients that all the time. And, you know, and, and, and I always love working on the third eye and the crown because I'm like, are you ready for some major change in your life? Because <laughs> once you open those up, you're going to see some major changes, you know, because then your intuition gets stronger and you, you start really hearing what your body's trying to tell you. And, you know, and like you said, your body is always speaking to you. Your body is always giving you messages and, you know, it's us taking the time to listen. And if you look at those third world countries that practice Reiki and they practice the seven chakras and they practice meditation and yoga, their longevity in life is yeah. a lot longer than yeah. the United States. They live a very healthy lifestyle. And, you know, the reason for that is because they eat differently they react to stress differently. They practice certain practices every day on a daily basis. It's in incorporated into their daily lifestyle. And we are a society. It's always rush, 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 <laughs> go, go, go. And we are always thinking, but we're not listening. And that's what we people have to take the time, I think, is to start listening to your body. Start listening to what it's saying. That intuition, those thoughts that run through your head and your mind, you know, it's our body telling us it's given, it's talking to us, you know, and I always believe, I don't know how you feel, but I always believe it's really not the brain that talks to you first. I believe it's the heart. 
The heart sends mm -hmm. messages and the brain relays them to us, but it's mm -hmm. us have to understand in our whole body. Once we understand our whole body as a whole, then we will understand what our body is trying to tell us and understand how to actually treat our body so we could heal naturally and move forward to a higher level and more productive way of living. How do you feel about that? That's perfectly said. It is perfectly <laughs> said. Yeah. I mean, when we're in heart coherence, you know, we are aligned with our heart. Those lower chakras are flowing through the upper ones and, you know, we are gaining information, but it does take that, that getting quiet. And with so many distractions, a lot of people don't do that. So yeah. with people that are super busy, I'll say, you have the shower. Are you yes. on your to-do list in the shower or are you thanking your body and tuning in to what your body is trying to tell you, you know, yes. you some deep cleansing breaths and just being grateful for the running water. Like, yes, we're all busy, mm -hmm. but there are all also windows of time where we can just choose to, yes. to turn our brain to like a different frequency and really tune into ourselves and reset yeah. And start listening instead of always chattering at ourselves. Exactly. What do I got to do today? Oh my God, where do I have to go? Oh, I have to pick up the groceries today. Oh, I have to get this project done today. Up, 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 up. And start listening. And you know, I love the idea of the shower because there is a thing called rain therapy. It's very, you know, rain is very relaxing. And like you listen to raindrops hit in the ground. And if, if you just relax and listen to the, the sounds of rain, it actually could be very therapeutic, just like the shower. You just yeah. like, feeling that water run down your body, listening to the water, feeling it. It absorbs you, you absorb it and you relax and you think. And that's why they even have those little tablets. You can find them in certain stores. You could actually put like lavender tablets in I your shower. <laughs> yeah, I do that too. And it gives an essence and it's relaxing and you could like focus on you and just shut the whole world off. Sometimes I'll spend like a long time in the shower just because I'm, I'm into my meditation and I'm relaxing and I'm feeling good. It's like, it's giving me a, I'm just, it's just putting my whole mind and body in a different perspective. My husband's like, are you okay? Are you okay? <laughs> it is, it, it is a perfect time because usually people are showering. So you do have that time yeah. <laughs> to control your mind. I know like that's a really powerful time because you do have the healing element of water as well as like the morning when you wake up and when you go to sleep at night are powerful times to just set new habits. Are you worrying at night? Are you going to sleep with the things you didn't get done? Or are you giving yourself gratitude for the things you did get yes, done? Thanking exactly. your body for going through the day with you. You know, there are so many ways that we can set ourselves up for a good night's sleep, which yeah. of course then makes us start off the day better and starting the day off with gratitude, love, something great is going to happen to me today, yeah. whatever it is, that's going to get you excited rather than that voice of, Oh, I'm tired. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I got to do this today. Like, right. Very motivating. That's not going to get you out of bed, like with a smile on your face and excited for the day. So just starting to listen. Yeah. No judgment, you know, just starting to listen because a lot of times we just get in bad patterns and have do. And we yes. can change them, but we got to yes. be aware of them first. Exactly. Exactly. Now for the people who are interested in starting the, with the chakras and starting the chakra therapy, how would you tell a new beginner? Like, how would you get, what advice would you give them some tips on how they can begin um, incorporating you know, chakra therapy into their life and, and having some really major and really productive results, you know, for someone who is interested in it is learning about it, but hasn't really incorporated it yet into their life. Yeah. I mean, they're, well, you could go to YouTube and put in any chakra and you'll get a chakra healing meditation. I do yeah. have a free shock self-love reawakening self-love through the chakras class. It's a mm -hmm. eight day class one day for each chakra. And the eighth, you get a guided meditation that's free on my site for subscribing but there are so many ways, but it is really listening. It's the first thing, you know, really yeah. listening. What part of your body thinking, what part of your body has been giving you issues for the last six months or perhaps the last 10 years? Like, right. What, what chakra is that related to? You yeah. know, that need, that part of you needs love. A lot of times when a part of us hurts, 
we're bad mouthing it. We're not yeah. giving it love. We're we're accentuating that pain. We're like, and I know when I was ill, it was mostly my legs, and I was always like cursing my legs. I was a dancer. I was like, yeah, my legs hurting, you know, and oh my legs, oh my legs. But if we're concentrated like that on the pain. You know, meanwhile, my legs were trying to send me a message. You yeah. Know, my legs trying to send me messages. So really coming to yourself with love, but I think it it's helpful to know, okay, what area of my body is out of balance? Maybe mm-hmm. I start with that chakra. Right. Start with, you know, a general easy, you know, class that I do on my own, like Jenny's that just is like one day, a little exercise, you know, to just get a little knowledge. Maybe I go online and look up chakra healing for whatever chakra is out of balance. Yes. There's so many resources and it's, you know, it's who resonates with you, you know, finding right. that teacher that resonates with you and that makes it simple. You know, I would say that too. Chakras can be really complicated, just like anything you learn, or it can be really simple. Yeah. You know, going with someone that really explains it in a way that resonates. Yes, exactly. And we were talking about that before. Sometimes it's just it's just clicking with the right person with the with the right energy. And you could just, you know, someone could tell you one thing and it could be the same exact thing. And then you can meet someone else and they tell you it. And for some reason, it just opens up a new world, you know? And, you know, I think it's, it's important to find that person that you resonate with and then, you know, and follow that person's positive feedback and try it. Don't be skeptical, you know, try it first and then Mm -hmm. see how it helps. And also I think a good point would be, you know, people have to realize things don't happen overnight you know, you know, especially on the East coast and the West coast, we always think we want fast results. <laughs> there is no such thing as fast results. It takes time and people have to just with meditation, relax, give it time and let your body absorb it, change your lifestyle a little bit, make it more a healthier lifestyle. And eventually you will start seeing positive results in your life. And then you'll see the the changes. And I've been on YouTube and they have some great videos too on, on different meditations. And, and there's one girl I go and I listen to her. She has great med- yoga meditations, stretches, and she talks to you and you do feel a difference after she does it. Now for your website, where can people go to, to actually find your website where they can get that class that you were talking to that free eight day class challenge? So it's jennymanion.com. So J E N N Y M A N N I O N.com. And just subscribe, you know, and you will get the free, you get a lesson a day. You also get welcome into my community. I give a free energy healing every month and yeah, love to support people, love to encourage them during the class. You do the class on your own, but you know, I'm there. If you have questions too, always happy to answer any questions Mm -hmm. out however I can. I love it. I love it. And um, I had another question for you. You said you written a book. I haven't read it yet, but I will soon because I love this stuff. <laughs> this is, I am so I I love I love learning. Like we were talking about before, you nobody knows everything, and just to hear another person's view, another person's perspective or ideas is just amazing. So tell people about the book that you wrote and where they can find it. So it's called. It's funny you said there's no short path to change, but it's just called path <laughs> to change. But, you know, it's relative to like, you might have a pattern in your life you've been doing for 20 years, you might be self-sabotaging in relationships or, or something, it's not going to take that long to Mm -hmm. undo that, you know, so really being kind with yourself when you're on this journey, it's four different units. The first part's about getting rid of the old, you know, so getting rid of clutter, forgiveness, that kind of stuff. Second part's all about the chakras, third part's about the present moment and tools and the fourth part's all about tools to move forward through things like self-sabotage through setting intentions so they're all short chapters that have a little exercise with them and you can find that on amazon or you know local bookstore uh wherever wherever you order books right yeah you know again just happy to offer my chakra meditation if you get that you can always hit me up from email i'm happy to send that to you and Yeah, that was through Llewellyn in 2016. So really grateful that that's out there. I love it. I love it. 
You know, this has been a pleasure. I love having you on the show. I'd love to have you back on the show. We can, you know, maybe hit different types of, maybe we could just even do a couple of shows and we can just talk about one specific chakra and, and talk about different I, ways, you know. I would love that. You know, I think that would be a great idea to have you on soon in the future. And we can actually teach people about each chakra in more detail yeah, and different and ways energy exercise or something yeah I, I would love that so guys you better stay tuned because she's coming back <laughs> and she's gonna teach us a lot of great stuff and it's been a pleasure having you on this show thank you so much for coming on the show and just before you go just tell everybody your website one more time sure it's jennymanion.com j-e-n-n-y-m-a-n-n-i-o-n.com and thank you so much for being on the show this has thank been you, an Stacey. amazing pleasure thank <laughs> you you have a great day you too. Take care. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.